Hey, what's up? This is Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, I'm going to be making some nunchucks um, just with some wood and some hand tools. So I'm doing it the easiest way that I can, but if you have power tools, work with those, or if you have another way of doing this, by all means do it. But this is actually not as hard as you think to do it with hand tools. So um, we can get to work from here. All right, so here's what you're gonna need for this first part. You're gonna need a saw, a drill, a file or a couple if you have, a chisel, a measuring stick, a pencil, and some sandpaper. Now, I have a couple of broken chair legs. This is free wood and it's perfect. It's some nice wood, I like it. So I'm gonna go with this one. The only thing is, obviously there's some things, some scrapes and some uneven cuts that I'm gonna have to work with. But really, if you're gonna get any kind of recycled wood and you're gonna repurpose it, the best thing you wanna do is make sure that you do make all your cuts clean. You have control over those things. Now, very first, too, you wanna to take a look at the piece of wood that you have and make any decisions now based on the appearance of the wood. So if there's anything kind of gouges or knots or uneven or warping or waning of the wood, this is where you wanna find, you know, take a little bit of extra time and find exactly where you want your wood, okay? so. For me, this kind of tapers in a little bit, and I kind of like that feeling for nunchucks, so rather than just having it from the top part, which is pretty much even, I'm gonna work a little bit down towards the bottom because I like how this tapers already. And it should be a comfortable feeling with the nunchucks. So in looking at that, I know where I wanna make my cut, and I'm gonna look at where I have this uneven part, and I'm going to basically just mark where I think I want my starting cut from this end, I don't want it to be too tapered down, so I'm just gonna go about here. Okay, that one I don't have to measure out. The next part I do need to take the time to measure. I'm going to go um, for the distance to measure away from it. In inches, it's 12 inches, but I'm working here in the metric system, so I'm going to go 30 centimeters. Now, if you're going to work in about you may as well put these two next to each other when you cut it to make sure that they're even. Right now, I just need to know where that's going to be. So right here is my cut, and then I'm going to mark the next one. Okay, so I have the wood next to it, and then I wanna make sure that I'm in the general area, so I'm just gonna put a dot there for reference, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and what I'll do after that point is just make sure that that is also 30 centimeters. in my general amounts. I wanna make sure that those are correct. So here is correct, 30 centimeters from, that is a little bit off, right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna just cut my lines and see where we're at after there. A good thing to do when you are cutting wood, if you don't have any kind of a guide or a power saw, is to start your initial cut um, actually touching the side of the saw with your thumbnail. And this is a great way to start off your first cut so that you always start in the right spot. Even though this is in the beginning and we can kind of sand things out later, it's a really nice touch and a good habit to create. Okay. Okay, so now I have my two pieces. I'm not too worried about the uh, finish or the outside right now. It's not gonna bother me. I wanna get, I wanna start drilling first before I do all of the finishing where I'm gonna sand everything down. Um, I did have some blowout with the last piece of the, when I was just finishing with the saw. Um, sometimes it'll hinge off and it'll take a little chip out of there. Um, a good way to avoid that is when you're sawing, just saw on a flat surface all the way down. So just put like a piece of scrap wood underneath and then saw all the way down into it. Like I said, I'm not really worried about it at this point because I am going to be uh, sanding things down a little bit. So I'll be able to work with this one. Luckily, it wasn't anything too deep, but that's a precaution you may want to take when you make yours. Now let's measure out for the holes. What we're going to do is essentially drill one hole into the shaft with a big uh, drill, a uh, big driver, and then uh, we're going to put in two smaller holes that will go all the way through. And this way we can place uh, our string all the way through and then we can hold it together by tension. If you have ball bearings or a shackle that you can place on top, then you can totally skip this part. But this is how we're gonna string it with actual string. <laughs> 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark a hole. Our top hole is going to be three centimeters down or one inch. And we're just gonna mark it right here. And then we're going to go one inch below that and three centimeters below that as well. So six centimeters down. So the next thing I wanna do is also find the center and mark that on the top. Okay, so now from here, what I wanna use is I want to use my big drill to go in through the top. This will come down through this way. And then I'm going to use a smaller drill to drill these holes right here. And really it's depending on what you have for your drill um, whatever you have it for yourself works just fine, but use as big as possible for going down into this because you're going to have to feed the cord through a couple of times. Okay, so let's go ahead and drill through that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is once we have the holes here, we're gonna take a chisel and then we're gonna work our way in a straight line from hole to hole. And what you wanna do is just make a small gap here um, or a small little trench for the string to go. And you can do this on only one side, but I prefer to do this on both sides of the nunchuck just because not only is it an even appearance, but it keeps the string from sticking out once you tie it. You can actually skip this uh, step altogether, but you'll notice that the string sticks out a lot more. So it's really, this one is uh, how you like to see it, and this is your own preference. But I'm gonna show you so you can see how it's done, how I do it. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is actually, I like to use a shoe to go underneath just because I, ha I can press into this and I don't have to worry uh, about it slipping or sliding. The sole of the shoe tends to help hold it in place. Now the next thing I'm going to do is actually just take my chisel and I'm going to just tap a line around right here. And I'm just going to go across to give myself a guideline first. I can do this with my hands, I don't even have to use the hammer. Okay, so now that we've got this gapped out on both sides, we can uh, take some sandpaper and we can clean everything up here. We wanna start doing the finishing and get this ready. So if you have a file, you can use that to even clean out this side even more, or you can just use lots of sandpaper. Okay, so when it comes to sanding, you always wanna start with a lower grit sandpaper first and then move to a higher grit. Otherwise, if you start with a higher grit, you're just gonna take off all of the sand and you're gonna to have to use more sandpaper to achieve the same thing. So I'm starting with an 80 grit sandpaper and then I'm moving up to 160. Always make sure whenever you're using a file to follow the grain of the wood. You don't want to go uh, against the grain on this one. So follow the lines of the grain with the direction of how you're filing. Now notice I kind of have mine at a diagonal here, but my pressure is always going in the grain of the wood and that'll really help a nice, uh, it'll keep a nice clean line and it'll make it nice and smooth when you're filing. Okay, so at this point, I'm really happy with how the sticks are. I could probably go in a little bit more with some sanding and some filing, but I really like how um, it feels. It's nice and smooth. And I think this is absolutely beautiful wood. So rather than staining it, I wanna try to keep the same color, but I am gonna treat the wood. And um, there's a number of things that you could do. Um, I would normally just throw a coat of spray polyurethane on this. It's very quick and simple or you could do like a, like a stain and a polyurethane coat just to really change the color. But um, a nice home hack is to use candle wax. The thing is, they do have, if you have like a scented candle, you're gonna have to just kind of work back and forth on that. So that's why I have the towel. I'm going to apply the wax on, just simply rub the wax onto the wood, and then I'm going to take the towel afterwards and then wipe it off, and it's a really simple process.
Okay, so now at this point, I'm really happy with how these are. Um, there is, it may not be noticeable in the video, but there's a nice light sheen. It's a little bit glossy now on the nunchuck itself, and it's really comfortable. And this is one of the important things you have to remember, especially if you're gonna use candle wax to treat the wood. When, whatever you apply, when you put the wax on, make sure you take the wax off, okay? Like ingrain that in your memory, wax on, wax off. It's very, very important, okay? You don't wanna have any extra residue that's gonna slide the weapon out of your hand when you're using it. The wood should only be conditioned. So this feels dry to the touch. When I hold it in my hands, I don't feel like my hands are going to get waxy afterwards. And because I used a tropical tea light, it smells like lime. <laughs> so that's a small added benefit here. But I'm really pleased with how this is and I'm ready to string them. All right, so to string them, you're gonna need only a couple of things. We're gonna need some paracord to string. We're gonna need some scissors to cut it, a lighter to burn the end after you've cut the paracord. And then one of the most important things is having like a needle or a dental pick or a paper clip, something metal that's stiff that you can push through the nunchuck and hook onto the string when you need to. Okay, so now that we're gonna string it, first thing you're gonna need is your paracord and then this one, there's really no specific length, but a good rule of thumb is the same length as both of the nunchucks. So uh, 24 inches or about 60 centimeters. And then we're just gonna cut it with scissors from there and then melt the ends to keep them uh, together. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this and we're gonna go in from the from the center hole and then through the top hole. Now, a good way to start this is to bend this a little bit and press so you get a little bit of a natural curve. And then if you're lucky, it'll actually come out of this hole here. Pull it out on this end and then we'll do the same thing here. Going from the center, making my little curve here so it's a little bit extra and then through that top hole. Now, put these out in front of you nice and even this way exactly because then you can find the string where it's at its most even and the distance that you want to put these two apart is right at the width of the hand okay and you'll have to constantly come back to this and place your hand here to make sure that that's correct okay, now the next step is we're going to take this end and we're going to go through this all the way to the other side all the way out and then pull that and then we're going to do the same thing on this side Put it straight through to the other side. And then pull that. Make sure again, the distance is correct. The next step we're going to do is take the string and then we want to put it through the top hole and then out the front. So a nice way to do this is again, bend it a little bit and press so that you get that little elbow going. And then once you start pressing this through, you get it to go out the front of the nunchuck here. And we'll do the same thing on both sides. Now, the end that we just came out, we're going to go all the way across the nunchuck and then we want it to come out this side where we just did our last one in. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go up and into the tip of this and then I'm going to press this one through the hole and try to get it to come out right here. And once it's out, I can pull that through. Okay, for the very last step, we just need to tuck these into the nunchuck again. So I'm gonna take my needle, and I'm gonna go all the way up at the tip, and then feed it through. And then the same thing on the other side. So I'll just feed that through here. And that's actually it. Now these are held together by tension, so all you have to do is pull them apart and no knots and you're set to go. If you're really worried, um, one of the suggestions that I've also seen is you can put some hot glue on the string and you can always dig that out if you need to restrain these. But otherwise, your nunchucks are done.
All right, you guys, so as you can see, these things work great. I'm actually really pleased with the product and the whole process all together. So I hope you guys enjoy this and you learn how to make your own nunchucks. And once you do, definitely be sure to check out my playlist. I show you a whole bunch of techniques from there. And uh, who knows, maybe we make some more tutorials now. All right, you guys, till next time, this is Sifu Cuddle. Bye.